The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. Is everything okay? It sounds like like uh, some rocks in the trunk or something in there. But uh, it's quieted off now. Anyway, uh, as always, another great day to uh, listen to the Power Trading Hour. And, of course, we always come at the sacred and anointed time. Ah! How did we know that it, something had to be problematic today? Uh, to do, let's go ahead and do this. Okay. Oh, that's right. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's do this and do that and go back to what we were going to do to begin with, the anointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And uh, we're up 31 points. I thought maybe we'd be a little weaker today and run up in the morning tomorrow. It looks like we're running up today. So maybe we're a little weaker going into uh, the uh, Chairman Powell notes uh, at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, of course, uh, generally they leak. I don't know. It leaks, not the right word. They do publish somewhere around 10 to 15 minutes early the speech so we'll probably see some action right after the open uh, depending on what he says I'm pretty good at predicting what a lot of people are going to do uh, kind of uh, always uh, got hooked on that uh, Sherlock Holmes saying of uh, uh, a individual is always a mystery but a bunch of them are almost a certainty so uh, don't know what one guy is going to do or what one guy is going to say. So I tend to try to stay out of uh, binary outcomes uh, dependent on what one person is going to say, like a CEO in a conference call. Eh, mostly you can tell what some are going to say. You know they're not going to rock the boat. Uh, you don't know whether or not uh, old Chairman Jay Powell. Uh, when they say that, I always think it's like Jay period Powell, like Jay Peterson and uh, – in, uh, uh, what was that, uh, Steinfeld? J. Peterson. I think it was J. Period. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Anyway, with J, you never know. Is it an abbreviation? Is it the first name? Is it the whole name? Unclear, unless you go research it out. And, of course, I've got too many things to do to find out whether it's a J. Period or a J. A. Y. I think it's a J. A. Y. But uh, it will not change my life, so I am not going and going to investigate that further. Uh, as I said, though, uh, what's going to happen? My, I, my guess is that uh, they're holding it up now. If we sell off a little bit into the close, I won't be surprised to see a little weak going into those numbers, probably somewhere around 945 in the morning. So uh, other than that, what do we have going on? Well, incredibly light volume, and I mean incredibly light volume. Uh, we dipped under, and let me see, I think I have it up and saved it, if I can find it here. Uh, okay, there's my library, uh, there's my videos, there's my videos. Okay, that's what I wanted to get up here. Um, did want to talk about uh, volume. I think I'd zoom in on this a little bit, too. Uh, we dipped under yesterday, dipped under 400... Uh, billion dollars we got 380 billion uh just barely touched uh 900 uh 900 uh 9 billion shares on the day yesterday so volume is waning dollar uh total do uh, market dollars waning fairly significantly too so there is a kind of a lot of evidence uh that we've got a little bit uh, building in the uh, short interest part of the market. I think that uh, as we uh, started to have lighter volume this week, the old chestnut uh, in the market uh, do not uh, stay uh, short a quiet market. 
uh, is probably a good uh, plan to take. Uh, but then we move on. Of course, uh, tomorrow's the 26th. That sets up fund buying, which really starts about mid uh, next week on the 31st. And that's going to be on very light volume. At the same time, almost everybody on Wall Street's going to be leaving for uh, the Hamptons. And I will call my nephew and get the uh, straight scoop because he can look out uh, from his giant hospital uh, in uh, – uh, in Long, or Long, yeah, it's Long Island, and watch the uh, traffic and give me a, uh, a uh, almost a helicopter eyes view of how crowded it is going out there. So I know when they're actually headed out there, uh, but uh, we'll see. But anyway, I'm going to guess about the 31st, uh, they're probably heading out there. It's the last big hurrah uh, for the titans of Wall Street. Uh, they, uh, they control the world. We just live in it uh, as uh, our, our humble peons that we are. Anyway, they'll be headed out to uh, the Long Beach, uh, and it'll just be quiet. Now, the problem is if you're heavily short, prime, prime, prime activity for running the shorts out of the market. Not only that, you're going to have light volume. you are also got fun buying coming back on the 6th. You know, you can do it the last uh, three days, uh, trading days of uh, the, the forward month. So literally they could come back and buy on the 6th and still be within the charter for their ETFs and funds. So don't be surprised that we see a little bit of that movement. And then, of course, historically, September is actually fairly weak. Uh, at least the first couple of weeks of September tends to be weak where they look for uh, – uh, light or faster horses and uh, generally that means that uh, some of the old horses are put out to the glue factory and that tends to be the first couple of weeks of september then the funds come back in and start to uh, putting the whip to it as rodney dangerfield said i can still see the marks on it where the jockey was whipping it i think that was about a steak come on what, what movie was that in eh, don't know anyway a uh, great movie Probably, if I can remember which one. So we've got that set up. Anyway, uh, we'll be back with Tim Ord here in a moment. There's not much else to really talk about. We're probably, maybe we have no action. Maybe we have a lot. Uh, but, uh, yeah, 945, the balloon goes up or the balloon drops. Which one's that supposed to be on uh, New Year's night? I think they drop the balloon. Why would they drop it? Wouldn't they to let it up? Doesn't make more sense. Anyway, sad and confused and waiting for uh, Fed action tomorrow uh, is kind of the way you color me. Uh, Tim Ord will be on. We've got a couple of questions for him already. If you want his uh, charts, uh, just email me at path at tfnn.com, and I'll try to send them off to you. So you can follow along at home and play the home game here at TFNN. But uh, eh, up, uh, let's see. Let me just go back here so we know. Yeah, up 32 on the S&P cash. Uh, Dow's up 123. NASDAQ up 140. Russell's up 20. Crude oil's uh, down from 150. Be back in a minute. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. We're having connection difficulties, so give me just a second. Uh, okay, got that. Uh, here we go. Uh, okay, um, we'll get to that. Well, we don't have him on just quite yet, although he sent me all these charts. Oh. There he is. Uh, so we don't have to send the search party out. Uh, how you doing today, Tim? Good. How you doing? I'm sorry, a little bit late, but uh, uh, not too bad. So now no, you uh, still snuck in under the wire. Okay. All right. Uh, I sent some charts over. Um, I guess we can go through them real quick. We can do that one. The guy had a question on. Yeah, that, I wanted uh, to do that one first, if you want to. All right. I, I mess with it, and um, I got tilt here, which is what the twenty-year bond or something. And yeah, it's an amalgam use, of bonds, but yeah. Yeah, you can use junk, or you know, there's several different ones. They all kind of work similar. And what I did, I did a ratio of the SPX to tilt ratio, and the only thing I really was useful for the top window is a, a fourteen. You know, normally use a 14 RSI. I used an 11 because it kind of pushes up to more extremes, so they're a little bit easier to identify. So I, I use 11 period RSI instead of a 14, and it does seem to work okay uh, when you get above. You know, when when the ratio RSI of this ratio, which is the SPX tilt ratio, gets above 70, a lot of times you're near at least a, a short term consolidation. And the blue lines are the ones that the RSI was above 70, and the red lines are when those below uh, 30. And, you know, last week we did get above, uh, the RSI of this ratio did get above 70, and uh, you did have a short-term high. Uh, this chart goes back, what, two years to maybe three years. And... 
It's something to watch. It's another indicator. And, you know, ideally, you know, to really do it right, I guess, to try to find highs and lows, the more indicators you get that suggest a high or a low, the more uh, high, uh, the higher probability that uh, the market will turn at that time. So using one indicator a lot of times doesn't work out on the long term. But So this is kind of another indicator I watch uh, that I, I put on. And so right now we're still, as I wrote, I updated this chart this morning. It's at 61, the RSI. So it's, it's not bullish. Ideally, you'd like to see a blow 30 to really get a low going. And the last decline we had going into that May low, June low, you know, the RSI didn't get below 30. You got, you know, below 50, but it didn't get below 30. So I guess you're saying right now is there's not really a good, even though we had an RSI above 70 here, you know, probably about a week ago, um, it hasn't really gone down enough to really suggest that we're near a short-term low, at least not yet. Uh, so, And also, we're in the third quarter. Uh, the third quarter, historically, is up as much as is down. I think 50% were up and 50% were down. And this is the worst uh, quarter of the year. So a lot of times, this is not a great time to make um, you know big investments, I guess you might say. Quarter ends around uh, September 30th, and from there, usually going to year end, it's usually pretty good. And right before you get these big runs up, usually you get a pretty good scare uh, sometime probably the next six weeks uh, where you get kind of panic readings, a lot of different indicators, and that's a good sign that you're nearing a low. I always tell my subscribers that you know, if you don't have panic, you don't have a bottom. And... Um, so I'm I'm kind of looking for a bottom, not probably not here where we are right now. Even though there might be a minor bottom here, it's nothing significant, I don't think. And uh, when the ticks kind of blow out and the trend kind of blows out and the VIX goes straight through the ceiling, those are opportunities uh, for for the you know because you're doing the opposite of what everybody else is doing and you're buying into that panic. And nine out of ten times, usually you have a good outcome. So, anyhow, this is a pretty good indicator for that. So, if the RSI gets down around 30, say late September, you know, I'd probably call that a, a pretty good signal that uh, the market's probably getting close to a low. But, you know, that's how I use the uh, the bond uh, kind of an indicator. I use, I use a ratio on RSI for that ratio. So. Uh, anyway, we didn't get to the actual question. Uh, no, we didn't. Before we started. <laughs> So I wanted to get to, to that, which just so everybody knows what we're talking about here. But, uh, well, I sent it to you, and now I'm trying to find it. Uh, please ask Mr. Ward if he sees any value in monitoring bonds that constitute ETFs such as J&K, L&Q, HYG, to use as parameters and market directions of stocks. So that was yeah, kind answered. of the answer to that. I guess the answer is yes. Well, yeah, I do, because it's... I don't use I use the ratio. Uh, that's my uh, point on it. I, you know, I do use bonds. But I use it uh, as a ratio against the SPX, and I use the RSI to determine, you know, what it depends what the bonds and the SPX is doing at any particular time. Uh, and with that said, so bonds do have an effect on the market, uh, but you have to put it in relationship to what the SPX is doing. So that's that's I tried to answer in that yeah I use they do have a bonds do have an effect on the market and the best solution I could find uh, to help you know trading uh, you know for trading signals is use the ratio and of that ratio use the RSI. So Good enough. Know, yeah. that, does that make any sense or not? <laughs> no, it makes lots of sense. I I think a lot of people that are new to trading really don't understand the size of the market, of the bond market compared to the equity market. Um, the bond market's about nine times bigger uh, as far as market cap than the equity market is. So it is one of those things where a lot of people pay attention to the equities because they tend to move a lot, a lot more. There's a lot more stories on a daily basis. 
but the uh, bond market tends to get in a, uh, a big trend and stay in it for a long time. So it's one of those things, if you can catch it, it tends to go on for a long time. Doesn't tend to vary, so you can hang on to those trades probably better. I don't know what your opinion is, but they do. It does seem to trend for a very long time. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, the bottom window on that chart kind of shows you it is a pretty trending market. Either it kind of trends up or down for you know months at a time. Yeah. Or the S and P's fly back and forth a lot of times in trading ranges. So. Okay, we'll be back with Tim Ord from the Ord Dash Oracle in just a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return, uh, we're finishing with... Uh, the S&P and the TLT chart. Uh, we've got uh, chart one, two, and three still to go with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Tim is a uh, market timer that's been around for over 30 years and won many awards and uh, many facets of uh, the Timer's Digest. So we're back to it. You want to go to chart one now? Yeah, let's go to chart one. Um I'm kind of a big uh, fan of uh, panic. You know, the VIX is, actually, is another uh, thing that measures panic in the market. So when it goes up fast, it's usually you got to panic. And uh, what the top window is, is, is the two-day rate of change of the VIX. And so, you know, the faster the VIX goes up, that implies everybody just panic toward the exit door. 
Uh, so, and normally you get the two day VIX or the uh, rate of change of the VIX uh, over a two day period up around 30. Normally you get enough panic to at least suggest uh, at least a short term low. And all those blue lines there are times when the uh, rate of change of the VIX two day was uh, at 30 or higher. And uh, this last, uh, the point I'm trying to make here, the last ring we had, it got up to high ball now here. It looks like about 20, 20, I don't know, 27 or so. Didn't get quite to 30 on that decline we had, uh, uh, well, actually, you know, Monday and Tuesday. So it really didn't hit a lot of panic. And to me, that suggests that even though it may be a minor short-term low, it's probably not. A, uh, the final low, I'll put it that way. Uh, so, and we did gap down on Monday, so now we're trying to fill the gap, which we're hitting today, uh, Monday's gap. And uh looks like we're probably going to test it in lighter volume, and that gap's going to be resistance. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a decent indicator. There's one failure back in, uh looks like about February, that, uh, you know, the VIX, the rate of change of the VIX did get above 30, and the market still went down. So, not you know, not a perfect indicator, but a lot of times um, it seems to work better than an uptrend. Um, as a trend, market's going up. Every time you get a little bit of correction, everybody's heads see the exit door. Uh, but going in a down market, um, it doesn't work quite as well. If you notice, they come close to lows or at least consolidations. And uh, sometimes they're a little bit too early. So, but anyhow, this is, you know, I'm thinking, you know, for the next six weeks here or so, we're just going to have a garbage market. It, it'll try to go up, probably can't go up. It'll probably go down, try to go down, won't go down much. I think the low in June was the low of the year. And I don't think we'll test that low. I could be wrong, been wrong before. But we had quite a bit of panic at that June low. Uh, and a lot of different type of indicators. Uh, even the uh, VIX two-day rate of change of the VIX did get to 30 there. But also, the I don't have it shown here, but the ticks and trend uh, at that uh, started in May and actually all lasted into about July. There were just gobs of closes on the trend at around two or better, a lot of different days. And so the more days you have of panic, the more solid that bottom will be. So I think we have a, a really good solid bottom, but um, on a short-term basis here, it's, uh, it's it's more of a trading market. You know, if you get a decent, you know, if you get a decent profit, I'd just take it because I think the market will just turn right back out, back at you again. So, well, but anyhow, I, have a, I have a question here, and uh, I'm gonna. Uh, it's kind of ill, ill worded, so I'll probably put it in my language here. Uh, but when you said uh, I've been wrong before, uh, there needs to be a, at least uh, probably some level of humility uh, for a stock trader. And uh, is uh, what do you what do you think about that? Is it, it, I, I've always felt that if I went to, and believed that something would happen with a 95% uh, probability, I was probably wrong. If I thought maybe 80, I could be right. But if I was absolutely darn sure, then, then generally I was wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, there, there's some truth to that. I mean, usually the hardest trades to take are the ones you think you're wrong on. You know, if you're looking at your indicators and all the indicators are are really blowing out because the masses are all on one side of the fence. And, um, you know, I got hate mail for some best calls I ever made, you know, <laughs> so. And uh, that's how the market works. You know, you got to get everybody on one side of the fence, and you really got to get on the other side of the fence to make the right call because, you know, just like at bottoms, everybody, you know, uh, was sure this market was going to go down a lot more after the, that June low. And, um, but it, even a part of that rally, uh, they were still on the rally, even there were some panic readings in uh, some of my indicators, even though the market was going up. So that's a real good indication that uh, the trend may uh, continue higher. So um, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm answering your question, but no, it was pretty good. It was uh, that was what I was kind of saying that generally 
the best trades are when no one uh, will give you a, a second look and says you're all wet and you have to kind of stick with your convictions. But uh, you're not feeling 100 percent that you're on the right side. You always have a little humidity humility and you have a bit of that i could be wrong uh the people that say they can't be wrong generally are wrong <laughs> you've yeah got, you've that's gotta, true you got to know that there is a chance to be wrong so that was part yeah. of it um i want to get into the other charts uh after the break i do want to talk to you a little bit about uh going into next week we got a little bit of fun buying uh starting about mid next week uh, then, of course, we've got a long three-day weekend. Uh, this particular week has a statistical, uh, a very high statistical correlation with extremely light volume. In fact, we had that yesterday, too. Um, and the day before, we've really been going down for about five days in volume fairly, fairly significantly. So we're going to go into that next weekend. And I've always heard, uh, well... I heard you early on when I was starting to learn to trade back around 1999 and 2000, uh, waiting for the big three-day weekend. And, of course, this is the last big three-day summer weekend. So you're going to hang out and maybe um, see some real changes when we come back the 6th or 7th or 8th of September after Labor Day? Well, a lot of times... I kind of found out that if you you know, especially the July fourth period seems to be working pretty well. But a lot of times, what I found out, if you're going up into a holiday, usually the volume drops out because traders take off early and whatever, and so the volume just kind of drops out. A lot of times, those turns into highs. If you're going down into a holiday and volumes dropping out because of a three day weekend or whatever, a lot of times those are lows. So can the market hang up here, you know, for another? Well, no, it's next a week from month, this coming Monday is when the markets are closed. So the market trading-wise has, what, six more trading days. You know, can't, to me, if the market kind of just hangs here into next Friday, you know, and we're testing that gap on lighter volume, to me, that would be a, a real bearish sign. Um, so, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of times these holidays are kind of reversal markets if you're going down it's usually a low if you're going up it's usually a high we'll be back in a line. minute we'll be back in a minute we've got uh, two more charts to get through Tim Ord if you want either one of them or all of them select the whole set email me at path at afnn.com Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Coming back, we got some questions coming in, and they may be answered in this chart. So why wait a, for uh, some clarification from the questioner? Why don't we get into chart two, Tim? All right, uh, this is the SPY, and uh, I got a trend line drawn around 415, and we popped above that with a gap. So we had an open gap. I forgot what day that was. It looks like about August 9th or 10th or somewhere in there, and we came down. And if you notice, you tested that gap on higher volume. If you look at the volume chart, you know, the second panel up from the bottom, you tested that gap on higher volume. That's usually not a good – if a gap's going to have support, you should test it on lighter volume. And if you have a gap that's tested on higher volume, uh, normally you still can bounce, but ultimately you'll probably go down lower. Well, here's another thing, too. If there, on Monday, we gapped down – and uh, tested the gap of the uh, first gap back in uh, early August or the first week of August. Then today we tested that Monday's gap down. On uh, most likely, I'm eyeballing it here, but today's volume most likely will be lighter than Monday's volume. So you got quite a few things suggest here that uh, the decline is probably not done yet, and um, uh, because you. You tested the August 9th gap on higher volume, and your test is Monday's down gap on lighter volume. So you got resistance at the gap. Um, uh, so anyhow, it's, it doesn't look good. You don't really have, and also at this low here over the last four days, uh, uh, you don't have a trend reading of any near panic levels. I think the highest one we had was on Monday, and that was one, 117 on the close, which is, you know, a little bit of panic, but not much. Preferably, at least, I'd like to see 1.3, preferably a lot higher. And so you don't have any panics in in the trend. And we did look at a VIX chart, a chart here on chart number one, I think it was. And you didn't really have the rate of change of the VIX suggesting a lot of panic. So you don't have panic, you don't have a bottom. You got a minor panic. So that, to me, suggests we've probably got a consolidation going on here at best. And uh, but the final lows, according to the charts I'm looking at, haven't been seen yet. How low can we go? I don't know. Um, uh, it's kind of hard to say here. You know, if we're still here uh, next Friday, going into the three-day weekend, uh, then the, the sideways consolidation could be the halfway point down, and that would probably give a target around uh, that little swing low end of July there around 390 that'd be a possibility and that 390 area is also those previous highs of of uh, June and July in that vicinity so that's a possibility we could go down there so that's how I'm reading it so you know in my opinion there's no bottom of any consequence right here so any questions on that or no, I was trying to get uh, something about an island top, but I don't see one. So uh, yeah, I can see. Yeah, what he's saying there is, you got a gap up. Um, 
uh, was it the ninth there or tenth, whatever. Then you got a gap down on Monday, and so you got an island gap, your island there. So you got two gaps that are close to each other. They they don't quite they they don't overlap or you know they're um, if you look at that window to the right there, you see that gap up and that gap yeah, down. Yeah, I was just I always did the Nissan definition of that, which was one day. Right, you gap up, you got right back down the next day. I kind of see if you don't, if you count it as about six or seven trading days, then you kind of have an island up there. I was just looking at the kind of the Nissan version of it. Oh, Nissan, yeah, yeah. Now that you okay. can have you can, you you can have more days. You know, you can actually have a kind of a month. You know, and the gaps are usually pretty close to the same spot. This one's not. I mean, it's close, but. Um, yeah, I can see there's sort of an island gap there, but um, I don't think it's a hugely bearish situation. But you know, 390 is a possibility, and I think that's uh, what we're kind of lining up for. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's a messy market again. We're in the third quarter, and of all the quarters there are, this is the worst one to really step in and and hold long or short he, he whipped around in this uh this third quarter stuff so but uh to really get the you know the next big phase rally going we're going to need you know some uh, trend readings up around <coughs> excuse me trend reading the per, per, proverbially vix readings up in extreme levels and so i'm thinking that's going to come in you know probably about a, you know four or five weeks from now when you get all the fear and everybody's yelling, you know, jumping out of windows and stuff. So but the, between now and then, it's going to be garbage. Well, so. I always love that story of everybody jumping out windows because I actually investigated it. You know, nobody really jumped out of windows in 1929. <laughs> fake well, fake yeah, news. But... Fake news, like all <laughs> the people that killed themselves listening to the War of the Worlds. There was one car oh, accident. World of the Worlds. Yep, yeah, yeah, that was another that. one. There's a lot of those things uh, kind of get a life of their own after that. We've got uh, a little bit of time left here, and then I want you to come back after the break and look at the XLE for me. But let's go to chart three here. you got two minutes. XLE. Right, take a look at it. No, no chart, chart three. three. Let's do chart three, and then right, we'll do XLE. When you get a break, you can bring it up and do all that. All right. Well, you know, this is kind of a long-term chart. It kind of helps you define if the market's really made a bottom. And uh, the bottom window is a NYSE summation index. And it's a pretty good indicator uh, to really define if you, if you made an intermediate term low. It, it doesn't catch the low. What it does is it determines that you're probably in a, in a bull phase again. And the, the, the ratios, you normally get below a minus uh, 700 or 750. And within two months, you rally back up to bus above plus 1,000. You're usually at an intermittent term low. You can go back further as you want to go. But we did hit a, you know, below 750 here. We hit about 700, I think it was, uh, in the um, mid-June low. And uh, or, well, actually, that was the May low, the May low. And so you're within two months, so that'd be July 15th, you're looking for the summation index to get above plus 1,000. Well, it's been, you know, it's been three months now because this is, you know, August, we're past even August 15th, and we never did reach plus 1,000. Uh, so that kind of tells me that the market still can back and fill here uh, before, I think, you know, a, a bigger worthwhile intermediate term rally begins. So I don't think... Um, there's probably a worthwhile low is formed, but um, I don't think, according to this statistic, anyhow, uh, the bull market has not started yet. I'll put it that way. Okay, we'll be back with Tim in a little bit. We'll look at the XLE on the way out. Uh, I've sent out uh, a ton of uh, Tim's charts, so if you want them, pass. That's P A T H at TFNN.com.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we come back, uh, we've got uh, Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com on. Uh, we're going to wrap up the show today with him looking at XLE for Fletch in the Den. And you've got about a minute and a half. Oh, so uh, I got an echo on that now. So uh, go ahead and uh, take us through this XLE in a minute and a half. Tim? We lose him. Okay, come on. Hello. There you go. You here? Okay. So let's go through this. Uh, we got about a minute. Let's go ahead and through the XLE. I got the chart up. All right. Uh, the, to me, it's 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 bullish. You made a bottom in uh, uh, 2020, and we broke the you know, multi-year highs. And uh, you had a sign of strength with volume. I think, you know, you count them. This is a monthly chart, so it's not a uh, weekly or a daily chart. This chart goes back to 2005, and you broke out on a multi-decade to new highs. Uh, so nothing bearish about this. So um, how high is high is hard to say. But if you notice, the market traded sideways from 2008 to 2021. It's kind of looked kind of a trading range there and so 
uh, we broke out of that, what, 10-year or 15-year uh, trading range to the upside. Um, to me, that's uh, we're going higher. So how much higher? Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, if, if, if you call that a trading range, a 15-year trading range, breaking out to the upside, uh, we could be going up for for quite, quite a few years, I would say, according to this chart. Thanks, for Tim, for being on. As always, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.